Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the event collection page inside a Squarespace website. This is an easy way for you to display a list of events on your website and then have individual event pages with more information. In this tutorial, I'll share my screen with you to teach you exactly how to set this up inside Squarespace and to show you what some of your display settings are. Let's go ahead and get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and on the left-hand side of the screen, I'm going to navigate to the Pages menu to add our event list to this website. We can click this plus sign to add it to our main navigation, but if your site is already live, I strongly suggest clicking this plus sign so we can edit the events before it's visible in our main menu. I'll click this plus sign here, and we'll go ahead and select Event from the list of collection pages. Squarespace will give us the option to choose between two different layouts, both of these can be customized the exact same way, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. We'll go ahead and start with this one right here, and instantly Squarespace will add our events to the not linked section of our site. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard, and we'll be taken to this events page. Here we go. Now on the left hand side of the screen here is the panel where we manage the events themselves. We'll see a list of upcoming events, and any past events can be seen when you click this option here. Because we just made it, none of these events have happened yet, so all of our events are here listed in upcoming events. Now on the right hand side of the screen is the website preview. This is the list of events. Every single event that we see on the left hand side of the screen is listed here on the right. We'll see the thumbnail preview, the title and additional information, and we can customize all of this. In fact, let's go ahead and start there. I'll select edit on the top left hand side of my website preview. And if we click this option, we can edit the section that displays all of the events. I'll click this option here and we'll take a look at our choices. Now our very first option changes the height. This is the height of the entire section. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color really quick to a darker color so we can see what happens here. Do you see the difference between my website header and the page itself? Back here in our format options, if we select medium, or if we select large, we're going to see a large space between the header and the event list. That's the page spacing that we're editing here. It's just the distance between the list and the top of the page. This also changes the distance between the list and the bottom of the page where our footer is. We've got medium and we've got large. And of course, you can select custom, which will allow you to adjust this as you see fit. Now I'll go ahead and scroll back up to the top and let's check out our other options here. Right now we have this set to inset. I'll move this over so we can see we've pulled in the list of events away from the edges of the page. If we select full, the events will stretch to be full width across the page. In set, we'll bring them in away from the edges. All right, now we've got our display options here. We've toggled on show thumbnails, which is this image here. If we turn that off, no images will be displayed. We can also choose to list past events or not, totally up to you. And here is the thumbnail aspect ratio. This will crop the image so that they're all the same size. Right now it's set up for a one-to-one -one square, but we can choose vertical, we can choose ultra widescreen. We've got a lot of options here. I'll go ahead and leave it as a square. Our next option in this list is the date style. I'm gonna circle this on the screen right here. Pay attention to what happens when I select side tag. Did you notice that the date has completely gone from the list of text and it's now displayed over the thumbnail? Definitely a different display setting. Now, if we have that list in here, even if show time is toggled on, we're not going to see it. So if you want to display the time for your events automatically, you'll need to select with text. This displays the date and the time. Now, to be clear, this doesn't display the time zone. That's something that we have to add with extra code, and I'll include some details in the description below. Now, if we toggle off show time, we'll just see the date in the text here. And we can also toggle up show location or decide to show it. There isn't a location here in our demo site, so that doesn't really show anything on the screen now. But if you have a specific location, you can choose to display that information or not. Now, next, we have the export links. Those are the Google Calendar and iCalendar links right here. When someone clicks on this link, they can easily add the event information to their calendar. You can choose to toggle that off or leave it on. Super customizable. And last but not least, show excerpt. Every event can have a custom excerpt or this summary text that's listed right here. If you toggle that off, all we're going to see is the event information and the view event button that takes them to the individual page. I'd love to show you the individual event page, but before we get there, just a quick reminder at the very beginning of this introduction of the event list, we changed the color. 
If you want to change the color theme for your event, you can choose another option from your list here. These will match the color themes that you've set inside your site styles menu. This will change the background and the event information to match the settings that you've selected. Again, you'll find this in the site styles menu on the top right hand side of the screen. Let's go ahead and select save and exit and we'll take a look at an individual event page. Clicking into the event page itself, this is where you're going to see the information about the event. Let me show you what's automatic. This part right here, where it takes people back to the event list, the event information, the date, the time, the title, and those calendar links. And then on the bottom right hand side here, this is known as pagination. If we go ahead and click forward to another event, we'll see it on the left hand side as well. This is what's going to direct people to the previous or next events inside the calendar. Now, this part right here is not automatic. This is just filler text. If we hop into edit mode and click this blue plus sign, we can add any type of content block that we want to an event. I'll go ahead and click this plus sign right here. We'll add a video block. We've got a lot of opportunity here. Now, if you have your event registration on a different program, not on Squarespace, but hosted somewhere else, you can click this plus sign here and add a button. Link this button to any page you want it to link to. This is great for people using third-party programs to manage their events. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, but an example could be Eventbrite or Meetup. You can link to the URL for registration here on the individual event on your Squarespace website. All of the standard editing features are here for these content blocks. After you've added all the content blocks that you need, select Save and Exit, and let's take a look at the settings for the individual events here. On the left-hand side of the screen, if you click these three dots, you can access the settings for an event. This is where you set the date and time by clicking this option here and choosing something on the calendar. This is also where you upload the thumbnail image. That's the image that will be featured next to the event. This is where you add the excerpt that was shown on the event list. You'll notice I have a small editing toolbar right here. I can change the style of that text to anything I want it to be. And then underneath that is where we have the URL. You can use this to change the URL for that event to something special, something that will be easy for people to remember and easy for you to advertise if that's what you want to do with your events. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got a few more options to go through. Under Options, you can choose to have the event published. You can choose to have it scheduled so it publishes at a later time. The schedule date is not related to the event date. This is when it will be visible to people browsing your website. When you want to change the event date, that's on the Content tab. Under the Options tab, under Status, a scheduled event will be visible to anyone on your website on a specific date. You can also just leave it as published or draft, totally up to you. You also have tags and categories to help you organize your events, and you can allow people to comment if you'd like to, or turn it on the Featured Event option, which we'll see when we talk about summary blocks. Now, there are a few more important things here. We've got SEO options. You can add an optimized title and description for an individual event. You can also add a custom social share image. When someone shares a link to this event on a social media platform like Facebook or LinkedIn, the platform might choose to display the image that you've uploaded next to the event link. Now, that doesn't always happen. It depends on the platform itself, but it's always a good idea to add an image there if you have one prepared. If you want to add share features like connecting a social media account or listing a location for the event here, totally up to you and completely customizable. We'll select save and I'll show you one last time how we got there. Click on the three dots next to the event and select settings and you'll be able to access all of these features. The key settings that I want you to double check for every event are the date and time, the featured image, and the excerpt. I'll go ahead and select close because we've got one more thing to review on our events page here. Click this option here and you'll be able to change the title and navigation title of the events list, the URL people go to to see your list of events, and under SEO you can add a title and description and again a social share image. If you want to add custom code to your event, you can do that here under the page header code injection underneath advanced in your advanced options under the page header code injection, and you can also customize the categories and tags. Now that we've talked about all of the features, there's one more important thing that you need to know, and that is that for a standard events page, we don't have the ability to add page sections. You'll notice I don't have the add section option here. The only place I can add content is to the right hand side of this events page. But on the list of events, if I select edit, I can add a page section both above and below the list of events. So if you'd like to add an additional page section with more information, you'll need to do it on the event list, not the individual event page. 
That wraps it up for your overview, but I've got a lot more to share with you about all the cool things that Squarespace can do. Underneath this video, I've included links to some of my additional tutorials, like that special one that will teach you how to add a time zone to the event list display in your Squarespace website. So if you'd like to learn more about all the cool things that Squarespace can do, definitely check out those videos. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and let me know in the comments. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.